morning guys my name is uh, anmol sagar and uh, i have cleared the upsc civil service examination 2018 with an all india rank of 414 this was my second attempt and first mains uh, i cleared this examination with my optional as geography so uh, today i'll be talking about my strategy and how i dealt with this optional and uh, in this time this time i scored uh, a 274 in my optional uh, 124 in my paper 1 and 150 in paper 2 so uh, i i'll begin uh, uh, talking about geography from paper 1 uh, in uh, uh, paper 1 uh, has two parts as you know uh, one deal with physical geography and the second part deals with the human geography uh, but i believe in the recent times this uh, boundary between the physical and the human geography is actually breaking up there is a lot of fluidity between the two uh, parts and one is expected the geography optional aspirant or candidate is expected to combine both the physical and the human part of the subject while writing the answer so let me start with the physical geography first physical geography as you all know consists of geomorphology climatology ocean oceanography biogeography and environment geography let me talk about oceanography and climatology first see these are the two topics in physical geography which are the most easiest and which are very straight forward you will not have difficult questions from these two topics so i highly recommend that you take one basic book uh, and or, or or your class notes and revise and learn every concepts associated with the oceanography and climatology because there is no possibility of getting very difficult or indirect questions from these two topics coming to biogeography biogeography well has great amount of focus on soils different type of soils so it is important that you uh, learn different type of soils given the basic books but apart from that also get hold of the rupa publication the physical geography uh, which has you know different types of soil which are not mentioned elsewhere so uh, for instance in 2017 a question regarding cerozem was asked this kind of soil is not mentioned in your regular savender singh or the physical geography and it is mentioned in that rupa publication so i highly recommend that you get hold of that book and read the biogeographic part from that particular book then uh there is this topic of major gene pool centers in uh, biogeography Th this topic you are not likely to find in a great detail in those conventional books so i recommend that you google this thing and uh, you know read about it actually uh, uh, there is this person known as vavilov i vavilov who gave uh, major gene pool centers so you can you know read about the gene pool centers given by him and you can utilize them in the uh, examination if the question is asked on them and as far as world's distribution of plants and animals and uh, other uh, other topics which are mentioned it can be easily found in your conventional book so you don't need to uh, you know worry about them the second uh, the next topic which i'm going to talk about is the most neglected topic uh, of physical geography which is the environmental geography uh, this is the most neglected topic because the topics which are mentioned in this are very very vague and very uh, i would say very wide in nature so like for instance the uh, ecological changes and imbalances these are the things which you will study in the general studies also but i uh, urge all the geography aspirants that you prepare this topic as a geographer not a, as a uh, student of general studies so get hold of a very good environmental geography book or or you can also take care, take hold of uh, savinder singh environmental geography in which he has actually dealt with all the sub topics in great detail especially the topic of environmental management The, uh, this environmental management topic which is also mentioned in the environmental geography uh, is a very very uh, is very important in 2017 they asked about the pave theory and in 2018 also they asked one question about the environmental management the ecosystem approach so this was this is all uh, ecosystem approach was you know properly mentioned in the savinder singh book so you have to uh, read this topic the environmental geography in great detail you cannot you know you cannot afford to ignore this topic now it now i'll talk about the most uh, lengthiest topic of the physical geography which is the geomorphology um in geomorphology i always recommend never go for a book of physical geography because uh, that does not cover the entire geomorphology um, and it is not very i would say uh conducive for the geography optional uh, i would suggest you to take uh, the book of savinder singh which of geomorphology it is a 600 book uh, page uh, book which is very thick book but very exhaustive and comprehensive and in that in the initial chapters there is this uh, topic where uh, uh, the savinder singh you know has mentioned a lot of scholars in geomorphology like uh, uh, 
J.T. Hack and Mori Sawa and so on and so forth and these and reading about these scholars and their contribution is important so that you can you know use those uh, contributions to criticize Davis or uh, any other scholar for, for instance in the 2018 paper uh, the first question was regarding the uh, criticism of Davis uh, approach. Uh, we were asked to criticize, uh, critically analyze the statement which was given by Davis. So one can only criticize the statement of Davis when he or she is aware about the other scholars uh, re re regarding geomorphology. So in this case, uh, this very book becomes very helpful. So geomorphology needs to be done in great detail and the most important part of geomorphology is diagrams. These are, we have to make sure that you know diagrams of every feature of every slope and anything which is mentioned in uh, geomorphology. So diagrams becomes extremely important and vital for geomorphology and also for climatology and oceanography but it is of prime importance for geomorphology. Uh, now there is this, uh, there are two topics of applied uh, geomorphology and applied climatology in two different top, uh, in subheadings. So these are also become, these are also important. Looking at the recent trends uh, in the optional, I believe the applied sciences or the applied nature of geography is becoming extremely vital. And I, uh, I would ask or I would recommend that uh, please give due focus to this very aspect of the paper also, or this very topic of the paper also. So now let me move to the most important uh, subheading or the most important part of geography optional why, uh, that is the human geography. Why, sh why am I calling it as most important is because this is an area where you can score the maximum amount of marks in paper 1 and this will be an area where if you have good hold of one particular topic which is geographical thoughts and models you will do wonders in the paper both, both paper 1 and paper 2. So, I would like to start my human, uh, the, the, my strategy of human geography uh, with the most important topic which is geographical thought. So, first question is from where do we study geographical thoughts? Uh, we have different class notes, yes we can use those class notes but never ignore the books. R.D. Dikshit book or uh, the book given by R.D. Dikshit or the Lalita Rana, there are many uh, Sudipta Dikari, so these are the books which you can take uh, and read from them. Take any one book or at max two books and, and you know internalize this topic, geographical thoughts. See why this has become very important is because geographical thought is the very basis or the, way, or the very foundation on which geography rests. Be it the physical geography, be it the human geography, be, be it the Indian geography. Every geography has its basis from geographical thoughts. So it is extremely important that you are well versed and completely clear with the topics mentioned in the geographical thoughts. So I have told you the name of the books from where you can study but I am going to tell you one more important source which not many people is uh, many people are familiar about that is the EPG Partsala. This is a government sponsored portal on the internet. It is by Ministry of Human Resource and Development. It is for different subjects and geography is one of them. And in them, uh, the professors from Jamia Millia Islamia or you know, uh, Kirodimal College, they have given great lectures on different topics of geography. I, and oh, it is also available in the notes format, in the PDF format. So please check it out. And the uh, you can check the thought, geographical thoughts, geomorphology, every topic can be found there. So please go through that and it will be very helpful in preparing the uh, topic of geographical thoughts. So the next thing which you need to do is of course reading the syllabus and you know uh, preparing every topic mentioned in the syllabus that is something which everyone knows about. I will be telling you what I will be telling you the nuances, nuances which will be required to clear this exam. So second most important thing is to know the different contributions given by different geographers, their names and their different contribution. For example, what the things given by Radzel or things given by E.C. Semple or Davis or Darwin. So these con you need to know, you, need, you should be well aware about these things. For instance, there was this question, uh, uh, I guess in section B of paper 1, which talked about megalopolis. So we should know that, okay, this John Gottman gave the term of megalopolis. This gives a different impression on the examiner that this person is, is well aware about this subject. So you should be well versed with the contributions of different geographers, which, the, which book he wrote or which book she wrote and what contributions they gave. So and keep using them in the paper. It is extremely vital for a geography optional student. Now third thing, as we see, uh, see the geography is an ever evolving subject. It is not static in nature. 
so what is important is that we recognize the trends going on in geography the recent trend is that the focus is shifting majorly on the post 1970s contribution so we have the behavioralism we have the humanism we have the radicalism welfare approach so these things should be studied in great detail so if you if you recall in the paper one of geography this year there was this question which talked about the marxist contribution post 1970s in geography they they they, they clearly mentioned the term post 1970s which clearly proves that they are now focusing on the uh, contributions and uh, you know inventions post 1970s so you have to be uh, you know you have to be up to date with all the happenings in geography post this threshold that is the one point now uh, the as we, we all the geography students are well aware that geography has gone through different paradigms right now the paradigm is of post modernism and po uh, the question has not been asked yet ex you know com uh, uh, completely about the post modernism but i am pretty sure but in the next couple of years one question will definitely emerge from post modernism so i urge all the candidates uh, all the people who are using uh, opting for geography option to prepare this topic in great detail over here we have this scholar named e soha uh he he has given great contributions he has many contribution in post modernism so prepare new learn about it prepare about it you know then we have the feminism in geography so these are the issues which you need to you know study uh, 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 and even if the question is not not asked about it you can definitely use them in different type of questions for instance in the marxist con the question which dealt with the marxist contribution post 1970s i mentioned that the david harve criticized the e soha's contributions uh, e, e e so has a concept of third space or, or, or these kind of things so you need to be well aware with the post modernism paradigm as well so geography is evolving the question papers are evolving and you need to evolve with it as well so and now why we say uh, now uh, people generally say that the geographical thoughts is an extremely important part of geography as an option but why is it important uh, big, uh, why is it important for scoring good marks it is because you can use this uh, ge uh, geographical thoughts or models for introducing a particular answer uh, for instance in the question which talked about the criticism of davis i initiate i, I introduce the question answer by you know introducing the concept of ontology ontography which was given uh, so so this this will give a different you know uh, angle to the answer uh, or, or in many many uh, answers i use the contribution of uh, kropotkin a russian geographer a social ecology if i can uh, correctly recall uh, it was given by him so i was using them in the issue places of uh, say uh, sustainable development so introducing your answers with geographical thoughts will give you an edge over other aspirants and other candidates so it is very important and uh, to use the geographical thought but you will be able to do this only if you have great hold and command over this topic so read and revise this topic thoroughly and then try to use it in every question be it the indian geography be it the world geography physical geography human geography doesn't matter you have to introduce your answer or utilize this concept everywhere it worked for me and i'm pretty sure it will work for everyone if you're using it wisely and of course using this thought should not be in a very uh, foolish manner it should be in a very intelligent manner that goes along with it so <clears throat> and there's one more thing which i would like to uh, add with this uh, the, with respect to the importance of geographical thoughts uh in many a times we have found uh, in a circumstance where the question demands criticism of a particular thing or statement or a concept and the best way to criticize a particular paradigm or a question or a statement or an invention or any theory is by utilizing the uh, uh, the uh, the parad uh, the, the different approaches in geography itself so if for instance if one needs to criticize x so he uh, he or she can use the criticism given by the behavioralist criticism given by the humanist criticism given by radicalist criticism given by the people who follow the welfare approach or from the environmentalist or the, from the post modernist so it automatically results into five or six criticism and there and then and there your answer is over you have given five to six points of criticism to a particular topic and those criticisms are highly credible because they are given by some important uh, geographers and scholars so it automatically has great amount of credibility and it, there is no harm in using them so it use those use the geographical thoughts even in the criticism even in introduction if possible even in the main body so this is the uh, this is this is the reason why i say that th geographical thoughts is very important uh, 
and uh, now i'll be talking about the second most important topic in human geography which is the population geography and settlement geography see these this is the area which is the most coring of all in human geography because the questions will be very straightforward there will be no much uh, uh, difficulty in answering these questions so what i want is that you prepare each and every word mentioned in the syllabus learn the definitions of you know things like slums uh, megalopolis or exopolis or different type of terminology is given in settlement geography and you know and men and also uh, learn the name of the contributor or, or the scholar who gave these terms so if you use this and are and you are uh, well prepared with the syllabus that that means you you can score good amount of marks in the population geography and the third most important thing in this aspect in, in in this topic is the importance of diagrams see it it uh, diagrams maps flow charts it is most vital part of this optional you have to use uh, these things in every question of geography every question i repeat you have to use diagrams and flow charts and maps for that matter whatever suits the best in the particular question so in population and settlement geography diagrams becomes extremely important suppose for example if you are talking about demographic transition you have to draw the demographic transition model otherwise the answer itself will be incomplete similarly in settlement geography if one, if one is talking about the rural morphology or the urban morphology so one needs to draw the entire uh, urban model and you know show how you know where, where the which zone is or the concentric zonation model as we know or the multiple nuclei model so we need to draw these things Uh, and the, if if you don't draw these diagrams and write the entire content then the answer will be incomplete and you will be getting very poor marks so the importance of diagrams cannot be over, uh, cannot be underestimated and there is one trick which i would like to tell you all who uh, uh, who are opting for geography as an optional that this demographic transition model is or theory as they call it uh, is the is one theory which can be used everywhere in the uh, question of population geography see if if some if, if one who has prepared, you know uh, read about demographic transition uh, he or she would realize that uh, it not only talks about the transition in the population structure but also the transition in the socio economic uh, parameters also so every problem in the world as we know majority of the problems are dealing uh, you know are because of the socio economic changes so this can be inserted in majority of the places wherever we see the changes are due to the socio economic reasons and and completely everywhere in the population geography so this demographic transition theory is like a, uh, a magic key uh, as i can put in the lighter note uh, which can be utilized in different areas of human geography so please use this demographic transition theory uh, very wisely and without shying and there is one more thing in demographic transition theory you can also link other diagrams in it so this i can show you on the uh, on the board that so if this is your demo normal demographic transition model and this just only talks about the population but up with this we can also add the sex ratio or the age sex pyramid by doing this by you know making different types of models as you know different types of age sex composition models over here so in this one very model you are able to show two different things which uh, which shows the creativity of the student uh, and this will always fetch you more marks so you can do this um, you know and by combining two different elements so this shows creativity and will definitely fetch you more marks so that is there with the population and settlement geography next comes the regional planning topic see regional planning topic is one topic which is which you cannot find very easily in many books i have suffered with the same problem uh, but what i did was utilize internet extensively for this topic especially for the use of uh, especially when it comes to topics like types and methods of regionalization so there are quantitative methods and qualitative methods you know the top there was this question once asked about thies and polygon it was uh, you know it was it, it is one of the you know methods of regionalization so and there are different such methods like map superimposition methods or different types of methods there are one method which was given by r p mishra also a geographer which you will study in geographical models and other things so 
you have to utilize net internet for types and methods of regionalization if you do not have the class notes or if you do not find this in any of the conventional textbook. So, and uh, there is this topic in regional planning which talks about regional development. See regional development is though mentioned, but it does not mean that you will re restrict yourself within that very subtopic. It, regional development should also be integrated with the uh, contributions of Francois Perrault or Bodwell or Hermanson or R. P. Mishra, uh, these kind of people, these people. So, uh, by you know regional, so what I am trying to say is that the, this topic of regional development should be supplemented by the con different models. The entire concept of regional planning is incomplete if you do not add the contributions of different scholars which are mentioned explicitly in your syllabus like Peru and you know the board will so and so forth. So, and, the, uh, and now after regional planning I would like to talk about economic geography. See economic geography the problem with this topic is that it is very very wide and very very gray, that the area there is many grey areas in this topic. For instance there is this um, topic which talks about world resources and distribution world the resource itself is such a wide term and by adding world resource it becomes infinity. Uh, you cannot just keep learning, revising and you know finding all the resources in the world. So, uh, a smart aspirant would like would tend to ignore this topic to a little uh, to a you know to a, a certain amount and focus on other areas. By ignoring I do not mean that you do not prepare it. What you can do is focus on the things such as renewable energy or renewable resources or which is actually of great importance in the present times or the uh, wave, uh, the ocean resources, the marine resources, you know resources from where you can generate electricity. So, these are uh, these are the things where you can smartly study and not study like someone uh, you know who is uh, you know actually spending a lot of time and reading all sort of resources available on the earth which is be, which will be a complete waste of time. And we don't necessarily or uh, generally see questions uh, arising out of out of the blue resources and you know examiner asking us to define it and talk about it. So, uh, study wisely when it comes to economic geography. For the rest of the topics mentioned in economic geography, uh, we generally have the content ready with us. It talks about uh, you know, typologies in agriculture. So, we have Wittelsay, we have Von Thunen, uh, we have Alfred Weber. The, uh, so, these uh, these are the scholars which uh, do find mention in economic geography, but that does not mean that you restrict these scholars contribution to economic geography. They should be used in other papers also, uh, not only in geography paper too, but other papers in GS also without mentioning in, without mentioning their name. I will talk about it when I talk about paper two. So, economic geography everything is clearly mentioned is read it uh, understand which scholar gave the contribution and read uh, cover each and every part of the syllabus do not leave anything aside even, even when it comes to world industries location and pattern once they ask the question regarding the Rotterdam industrial model uh, you know th that can only be answered once you are well aware about the different industrial locations and types of industries found in different locations. So, today they are asking Rotterdam tomorrow they can ask about St. Petersburg the day after tomorrow they can ask about Chicago. So, you have to be you know well aware about the different industrial locations. So, that is there. So, now I will like to um, move to paper 2 of geography. See, uh, now when you look at the paper 2 of geography, uh, what you will see is that the paper is more like a paper of general studies. It never looks like a paper of geography and that is where many aspirants go wrong. So, uh, I believe this more simpler the paper 2 is, more difficult it becomes. If you see today, uh, this year's paper, uh, they were asking about Nipah and civilitis. So, these type of, they even asked us about the schemes and initiatives by the government in conservation of water resources and vegetation. These are the topics which you can find in general studies. These are not strictly speaking geography. Uh, there was this one question which, regard, which was talked about the uh, why there is negative balance of trade. This is, this is more or less an eco question of economy, but it was found in geography as well. So, how do you deal with this paper? How to get good marks? I scored 150 in this paper and I think I can, you know, I, uh, I have some credibility when I say that paper 2 is nothing but the application of paper 1. 
uh, the question might be related to uh, India or in the context of India, but the base will always be from paper one. This is the reason why everyone says that the, the geographical thoughts and models are extremely important because you will be utilizing those same models, same scholars, same theories in paper two. For instance, as I talked already about the regional development, for instance, if there is say uh, Skill India mission. So, if, if, if we have to talk about Skill India mission in the geographical terms, we will say that the Skill India, there are different theories, the uh, competition viewpoint is there which talks about local talent or entrepreneurship, you know, which, which can become, which can act as a growth pool in the future, right. So, the, uh, or if we for in instance talk about construction of road, say Pradhan Mantri Grameen Sadak Yojana, Gram Sadak Yojana. So, the, you, it, it can be also tackled in a geographical point of view. For instance, if uh, I will explain you how. For instance, if a road is made between an urban centre and the rural centre, there will be the development of the forward backward linkages. Right. So, over here you can add Friedman or you can add Francois Peru or you can add the Hermansen's rural multiplier model. So, this is how you in, uh, integrate the uh, you know wide and very generalistic concept with geographical concepts. So, this is how you will get more marks or when it comes to population for that matter. If we are talking about population and not mentioning Malthus or Marx, that means we have not uh, uh, done justice with the answer, no matter which paper it is being asked. So, utilize the models there also. When, it talk, when you talk about industries, let us say there is this concept of uh, Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridors. See, Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridors or the NIM, NIMZs, these are nothing but the manifestations of the validity of the concept of Alfred Weber, the agglomeration economies. So, these are the things, these are, this is the way we tackle the general issue uh, uh, from the geographical point of view, right. So, that is one thing, application of paper 1 in paper 2. Second thing, as I already mentioned, use models and thoughts excessively in paper 2. Uh, for instance, there was this question regarding Nipah encephalitis and uh, what I did was I also added social capillarity model given by Dumont. Uh, uh, so, this is how I was you know trying to tackle these generalistic questions with jo from the geographical point of view. It really helped me. I will give you another example. For instance, we, ha we know that in Punjab the farmers are growing rice. Uh, so, this is a very uh, you know everyone knows this, but from a geographical point of view this is a manifestation of the possibilistic school of thought. The human beings over there are more developed in terms of technology and culture and they are able to utilize the nature. The nature is acting as a possibility for them and not as a hindrance. So, this is another example of possibilism. So, this is how you use models and theories and geographical thoughts, right. So, and uh, the third topic uh, or the third uh, uh, thing which I like to tell you with respect to paper 2 is how, uh, you, uh, importance of syllabus in the previous year papers. See, in paper 2 the questions which you like to uh, encounter will be somehow related to the previous year papers. So, it is very important that you go through all the previous year papers and uh, you know and 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 try to develop you know a sense of what kind of things they are asking what are the what are the things that the examiner is more interested in asking see as we know that the census is fast approaching so it is very prudent that we start you know uh, learning about the census of india and the demographic transition model in india and you know all the population related facts in india so this is how you tend to develop uh, this uh, this sense after analyzing the previous year question papers only the second is the syllabus there is, if you read the syllabus of paper 2 and read and uh, cover each and every point of it, then that means you have done justice with the geography optional. Geography optional is extremely wide, you have 20 topics to cover and multiple subtopics to cover. And in paper 2, it is extremely important to cover each and every subtopic. Why I am saying this is because some of the topics which are mentioned is like tribal area development. So, there can be a direct question regarding tribal area development without any uh, difficult, uh, without any changes. So, if you have prepared the syllabus thoroughly, then only you can answer these kind of questions. So, prepare each and every word mentioned in the syllabus of paper 1 and paper 2. That is there. Now, <coughs> now I will talk about the importance of maps and diagrams in paper 2. See, I want you to adopt this uh, formula that for 20 mark question that you will attempt, uh, you will draw at least 3 diagrams, for 15 mark questions you will draw at least 2 diagrams and 10 mark questions you will draw at least 1 diagram. In this diagram I mean maps, flow charts or models or anything. 
there should be some sort of sketching done on your answer sheet when you attempt these type of questions. This is very important. Geography uh, requires the visual representation. It is not completely about letters and words. It is also about drawing. So you have to focus on that. See, and uh, when it when it comes to you know the book source or the source from where I studied, see I. I never had any uh, you know uh, some unconventional source I I also studied from Khullar DR Khullar and it was I believe very sufficient for me and the rest uh, because you only have to develop a basic idea about the syllabus the questions which will be asked uh, in majority of the times will not be direct questions correct so you if you have the basic structure ready for instance if there is a question regarding the agriculture of india so if you know the basic points about the agriculture then you can tackle different types of variations in the questions so it is so therefore it is very important to follow one conventional source or any source for that matter which is uh, which is covering a significant amount of your syllabus Read any source, there are different type of books similar to DR Kuller, read any book but make sure you have one book which, which is for the geography of India that is there. So now paper 2 since we are talking about India and we are applying for the Indian administrative service or Indian civil services, uh, it is important that we know about different data uh, with respect to population, trade, sex ratio, density, road density. Uh, you know the density of slums or the HDI. So, data uh, for these things are very very important when we deal with paper 2. So, prepare the data and, and preparing them itself is not enough. We also need to prepare the maps uh, to represent the, those data. So, we have great amount of maps given in DR Kullar, but the problem which arises is that the, the, uh, the scale or the keys in which they are uh, which which is provided is very you know very wide it, uh, it it talks about four to five keys which cannot be you know remembered in the examination so it is very important that you simplify the keys and you know simplify the uh, pattern or the scale say uh, you, you can divide the map into 0 to 50 50 to say 100 and 100 and above in three portion itself your map will be covered so it is extremely important that you simplify the maps given in Kullar and learn them and revise them regularly and you have because you will be using those maps in almost every place if, if, if it relates with population or trade or sex ratio because if you do not use it the other person will be using it and you will be on the losing ground. So let me give you an example how to use the maps very innovatively for instance if there is a question regarding the uh, say trade with India. So what you do is make a rough sketch of India. You make a rough sketch of India and for say for instance there is a question regarding the trade with, uh, trade with Nepal as compared to trade with Bangladesh. Just let us assume the trade with Nepal is not very high. So how do you represent that in map? So the simple way of doing it is by using line maps. So let us say this is this represent lesser density of trade and this represent higher density of trade. This is by, by just just by drawing these lines itself you are showing to the examiner that you understood the topic and you have represented that on the map and you have done justice with the question and the answer. So this is how you will get more maps and sometimes it is not even important to draw the entire map. If, if the question is regarding say Kerala or, or so for instance there was this question about uh, Nipah encephalitis which was around Kerala. So I never drew the entire map I drew this Indian subcontinent and a little, a little bit of Kathiawar region and I just marked I did this. Uh, and show, showed that this 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 entire Nipah is affecting the entire you know the region near Kerala. So this is how it what this is what is needed. So you need to use the maps very innovatively and excessively in the geography option. So that is what you do. So and next topic uh, next next thing which I like to tell you uh, with uh, geography optional is the importance of current affairs which is growing in the paper. Uh, in 2017 there was a question. Uh, in paper 2 which talked about the uniqueness of Indian monsoon in 2017. Uh, this year 2018 there was this question which talked about uh, you know how dust storms in India were very unique. Uh, so uh, as you might have heard that the dust storm was so high in intensity that many people even died in the western Uttar Pradesh region. So I uh, in that question uh, though I have prepared it I also utilized the map to show how, where the intensity was and how it affected the area which it affected. So over there also the maps were being used. So, however, aside from that, aside from that, uh, 
current affairs importance is growing in paper 2 you can expect at least one question regarding current affairs even in 2019 also uh, uh, actually uh, there was this uh, article which i think will be of help for all the geography aspirants is regarding the uniqueness of the cyclone titli uh, it, it was given by rhymes and it was uh, printed by the hindu so it talked about how titli cyclone will be is unique so i think you can go through that and you know prepare that similarly we we experienced hail storms uh, uh, hail storms in noida uh, generally that is not that it is a very unique phenomena and it not a very common phenomena in the plains but it was seen so these kind of things uh, the the, the co examiner might ex expect that you know the reasoning behind it and he can even ask these kind of questions so please also keep in mind the important happenings or the important uh, uh, developments both in the physical terms and the human terms which will be very important and the last thing which I, I would like to talk about in paper 2 is the uh, the importance of the physical setting the topic of physical setting see every year there is a question regarding physical setting in some way or the other this year they asked about the difference between the malva plate you and other type of plate you and some or the other way they will be asking because it is a very important topic so what i want you to do is to prepare this topic very thoroughly and this can only be done if your knowledge of paper one especially the physical geography part is very strong so prepare this from the book named Khuller. it is a very sufficient book to study this you know they have given different theories for the formation of himalayas and the formation of plains and the western guards uh, you know the formation of the aravalis so these are the things you have to prepare in detail and you know what is the geographical differences between you know the chota nagpur plate you and deccan plate you how meghalian plate you is considered to be a part of the deccan plate you so these are the questions which you will be encountered and they have already been asked so this requires you to have a sound knowledge about the physical geography so prepare this prepare this topic in great detail physical geography in paper 2 see so this one topic which is known as contemporary issues see contemporary issues if you look at the top subtopics mentioned these are the topics which you generally study for general studies uh, i personally gave uh, no special efforts to these issues and uh, the questions were asked regarding them uh, but in, but i was able to comfortably answer them because your preparation of gs prelim the gs mains is sufficient enough to uh, you know and uh, do justice with the questions being asked with, re with respect to the contemporary issues and of course the caveat atta attached to it is that you make the answer look more geographical that can happen only if you have your geographical thoughts and models uh, you know well internalized in your system so uh, that is there Bef uh, I w uh, I now i would like to talk about the uh, the map marking uh, we have 20 mark uh, question with respect to map that is the first question generally in the paper 2. So how to deal with map marking? This year I was able to attempt 6 map marking and I was able to write about 7 of them. Uh, so uh, how did I do it? Uh, I mean uh, how to tackle this 20 marks because these 20 marks if you are extremely good you can also get 20 if you are very poor you can get 0 also. So this is like a very straightforward question but you need to prepare hard for it so how do you do it one way of doing map marking is by you know doing it side by side when you prepare for uh, paper 2 of geography uh, you know for instance if you are reading about industries uh, uh, in your topic also prepare about also also find out the different industrial zones in india different industrial cities in india and practice map marking alongside it that is one way of doing it by the time you finish your geography paper 2 you will be well versed with uh, you know different types of uh, cities and places so on and so forth but i did not follow that approach what i did was first i prepared all the previous year questions asked in the maps because it is a general trend that at least four to five questions will be repeated so i did that i if you if you add on all the questions from 1970s or so you will have more than 300 questions along with you so prepare those 300 map markings all the previous year papers uh, then apart from that if you notice the map markings or the questions asked in map marking there is a slight trend which are which is seen so, so what is there is they will ask one city which is a very important historical city this time they asked about Shravasti sometimes they will ask one important hill station sometimes they will ask about important tourist site 
they will always ask about one or two wildlife sanctuaries or national park so these are the th this is the thing uh, which gets repeated sometimes they also ask about a news about a city which is in news so if you have the these broad frameworks along with you you can very well attempt seven to eight map markings if you have identified this pattern you take any question paper uh, you will always find this pattern there will be some theme behind that very question asked and it will be repeated always so, so have this pattern developed along uh, and you know and identify it and work accordingly so and but most important thing in map marking is that you have to revise it continuously once you learn all the cities and everything you will not be able to re remember it for the long period so make sure that you keep revising it uh, in, on a regular basis so that is all with the paper 2 now uh, before i conclude i would like to summarize few points uh, for the entire geography optional the first and the foremost thing which i also followed was to focus more on the part b of paper a paper 1 that is the human geography part I attempted three questions of paper, uh, three questions of the part B in the paper one, and it really helped me out. Though I knew all the five questions, but I attempted three questions from. Uh, I knew all the eight questions which were being asked in paper one, but I attempted only three questions uh, from paper uh, part B of paper one, and only two questions from part A of paper one. So I won't. Uh, that is beneficial. That that turned out uh, successful for me. It can also help you also because paper uh, part B, as I told earlier, also it is very predictable. Secondly, uh, utilization of thoughts and models in every question as much as possible. That is the second point. Third point is apply paper one in paper two. Paper two is nothing but the application of paper one. It is not geography of India. It is basically the application of world geography in geography of India. That's how you should, you know, look at paper one. Fourthly, use maps, diagrams, flowcharts everywhere. Uh, you know, in every question, it is extremely important. It's simple, and you know, you can, you have to practice. And for this, you have to practice making world maps and maps of India on a regular basis. Only then you will be having that level of comfort to draw it in a free hand. And please remember, these are the sketches of India and map, India and world, and not the maps of India and world. There's a difference between the two. And then you will be drawing only sketches. And lastly, always remember the name of scholars and their contributions and in the book they wrote and year in which they wrote. And you and use them on regular or use them in every question where it is possible. That will give the uh, that will make the examiner think that this person is you know having a some kind of geographical background and, and he or she has you know prepared the subject well. So if you do these kind of things which I have just mentioned uh, you will be in a position to have score good marks in geography geography is a subject which has implication or is beneficial not only for improving your mark overall marks but it can be applied significantly in other papers also especially in gs paper one or your knowledge of human geography can be very beneficial for the governance part also or paper three like the cropping patterns and other aspects that is completely geography uh, if for, for instance if there was this essay about poverty and prosperity this year and and this poverty and prosperity is also the part of the syllabus of geography so i was able to utilize this uh, uh, geographical knowledge and utilize and uh, apply it in the essay paper so this is how geography becomes extremely useful in other gs papers also and and the knowledge, and the and the ability to make maps is another advantage which the geography geography candidates have they can utilize they can make maps of different you know make maps of india and world and you know and that can be uh, that can be uh, utilized in gs paper 2 and gs paper 3 also when we talk about international relations or resources so on and so forth even paper 1 which has geography as a part of its syllabus so geography yeah, though it has 20 topics it is a very lengthy subject no doubt about it but the, the results which you get after preparing the subject is extremely high yeah, so i would say the one of the reason why i scored high in gs paper 3 uh, is because of my knowledge of geography so prepare the geography in a very smart manner and i hope uh, and i'm pretty sure rather that you will score very good marks so uh, all the best to all of you and I hope you will do very well in the exam. Best of luck. Thank you.